Radio 1 DJs were stars every bit as big as the artists. These were the guys, remember, who were not only heard by millions of people every day, they were seen as well on top of the pops by millions of people. My fellow DJs when I started on Radio 1 were Mike Reed. Good evening, welcome to another thrilling, stunning, action-packed Top of the Pops. Peter Powell. But you're very welcome to tonight's edition of Top of the Pops. Kid Jensen. Hi there, Kid Jensen here. Simon Bates. Welcome to the studio for your television center for a live Top of the Pops. Oh, Bates! Gary Davis. And we've got some great bands on the show tonight. We've got Wham, Blamange, The Fun Boy 3. They didn't look and they weren't the age group of any of the young people that they were trying to be cool and influence. Some of them were really middle-aged, you know, and they were all trying to be trendy. I remember when we were doing Top of the Pops, you know, you'd have them there and these, like, young, young little girls and these old guys dancing with them. I did Top of the Pops every few weeks. And when I look back, I think, what the hell was going through my mind at the time? Why the hell did I have my hair like that? And it wasn't until Harry Enfield came along later on and said, look, Smashy and nicey, this is what Radio 1 DJs were like. You didn't realise at the time. You know, the sort of shiny jacket with your name on it and not half made doing a charity gig tomorrow. It's fantastic. Love it. When I saw Smashy and nicey, I instantly knew what they were talking about. And, uh, that was Runaway there, the old Del Shannon song. I like the bit where he goes, oh, wah, 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 mate. <laughs> I like that bit too, mate, the bit where he goes, oh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and I hear that old Del, wah, wah. Shannon's making a bit of a comeback. Uh, well, he'll have about six feet to go, mate. He's a wah, 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 dead. <laughs> Great shame. Great shame. I mean, that was, you know, it was a character based on real human beings that were there, on air. Mike Reed is an award-winning Radio 1 DJ, and as well as playing other people's records, he also makes his own. People just push it too far. If you're good at playing records, play records. Don't make records. They really, really hanker to be pop stars themselves, and that's why Mike Reed brought out a song which I wish I had forgotten about. His latest disc is released on Monday, and it's called Promised Land. I left my home in central London in the Hammersmith flower bug. Out through Chiswick, I'm the only form of bypassed eyes of work. Picked up the main A30 at Hounslow, headed on down to Staines. <laughs> I didn't know he'd done that. That's really not great. But, wow, he thinks he's Cliff and Shaky all mixed up together. It's really scary. So I whizzed down to the garage. We delayed doing the vocals for a while, and I came back, spread the map out, and I thought, Hounds Lab Basing Stokes Inns are all in the A30. I thought, this is going to work a treat, so I did it. It's not Route 66, is it? <laughs> like Basing Stoke and Slough, you know. Oh, look, there's Hounds Lab. I've already come through Chiswick. I'm on my way to Land's End. Just listing every place on the way. Oh, look, there's Staines. And went past the Royal Holloway College where Bonnie Tyler filmed Total Eclipse of the Heart. And I thought, well, let's put that in. Holloway College where Bonnie Tyler filmed Total Eclipse of the Heart. Going through Camelie and Hartley with him. I guess that's a pretty good start. Woo! I'm going to stop off at the services. He came in with us. It's just the most tedious tune ever. What about Simon Bates' R tune? That was a beauty, though, wasn't it, there? Richard was very bitter and twisted about his family, not about his father, but about his mother. Do, 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 do. All the neighbours attacked her with clubs. And he found it very hard to cope with, and he felt completely betrayed and absolutely appalled by what his mum had done. This was almost the lowest point. Then she nearly starved to death. Well, they found out around Easter time of this year that Richard's mum was getting worse. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> Her husband came back from the bakery and spontaneously combusted. You never know just what's going to happen in the future. Two uh, people who had a very, yeah, I suppose you could say, hard time ahead of them. <laughs> It would make you vomit. It would actually, you know, you, to listen to him, you had to have a bucket to hand. I had to be in the car when our tune was on because if I was at home, I would have wanted to find something and just killed myself. <laughs> when you look back on the 80s Radio 1, I mean, John Peel, of course, is a kind of beacon of light that shone out and he was a consummate broadcaster. But the rest of them, they're a bunch of really naff, cringe-making, sicky, arrogant up themselves twats. They are so incredibly dated now, but they were dated then. We just didn't know it. We're never safe from the cheese. There's always someone somewhere who's gonna go, hey, hey, you guys are great. So watch out, it could happen again.